Now starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to our webinar today presented by Lakeside and Multiteria 2021 Hospitality Trends in Labor, Venues, and Sustainability. My name is Emma Stam and I am the Director of Marketing um, at the Lakeside Family of Companies and I'm here to introduce our panelists starting first with Nancy Lane. She is our Senior Designer of Visual Merchandising and Product Concepts. She is a designer specializing in virtual merchandising. She knows that a dining experience is about more than just great food. Uh, she has played a vital role in remodeling dining facilities to enhance customer experiences and to improve operational efficiencies and increase revenues. And up next is going to be Robert Watson, Regional Sales Manager, and uh, he works with some of the most famous brands in our business and has transformed the approach to enhancing guest experiences over his career. Uh, he has driven the hospitality, sports venue, and education markets to push boundaries on furniture and equipment solutions, giving him a finely honed knowledge of the challenges that these panels very specifically are facing. Objectives of today's webinar, we want you to leave with the understanding of these food service trends that are affecting hospitality specifically. Uh, we want you to learn adaptable solutions and to develop a roadmap for success. Uh, are you guys seeing my screen? You seen the presentation? The presentation just went off on my side. Yeah, it went off. All right. We're, seeing, we're just we're seeing an email page. Oh, so you've been, okay. Bear with me. Hmm. Sorry, folks. <laughs> my PowerPoint has unfortunately. Got itself down here. Bear with me. Okay, so you were seeing not the screen that I thought you were. All right, I apologize. Are you seeing now the objective screen? We're seeing the first slide on the presentation. Okay, so bear with me. I'm sorry, I'm not. Okay, I'm just second you get it. Yeah, I can't get the presentation mode on this particular screen. So I apologize. We're going to just go. Mm -hmm. All right, we're just gonna we're gonna run it just like this. So I I apologize. Um, we're gonna we're gonna run it like this for you here. Bear with me. Oosh. Let me try one more thing. I am really sorry, folks. Oof. Yikes, I am one more time, one more time here. I'm really sorry. There we go. Okay, here we are. Okay, now you're seeing the objective full screen, yes? Oh, yes. 
So sorry about that. Here we are. I'm going to uh, pass it on to Nancy Lane. We're going to get into this. And if you have any questions, please drop those into the chat box or the question box in the Google webinar pane. And we are going to save some time at the end uh, to address those. So I will turn it over to Nancy. Take it away. All right. Thank you and welcome. We're so happy you joined us today. We're just going to cover three of the top trends. The first one is social responsibility. And you're connecting now with the eco-conscious consumer that is creating sustainability through social um, responsible business practices. So, wow, this Gen Z has added a lot of pressure. The existential view of consumption is going further than it's ever gone before. How and why we consume are being put to the litmus test. The um, exerting pressure to limit resource, depleting waste, frivolous consumption, they are turning the tables to focus on the ability to repurpose. So some of the micro trends that we're seeing is waste reduction, composting, recyclable materials, changes in packaging, and reusability. So with composting and takeout packaging, that has been really important here lately, equipment and recycle um, equipment, small flexible menus, water saving initiatives, and then modifiable and multi-use equipment. So one of the things that we've had a lot of feedback from the different segments is they put a pause button on sustainability. Um, you know, we've heard from them saying that they're gonna go back to it once they get through this. They just wanna make sure that everybody's safe. Um, and again, packaging becomes number one on their list. To-go containers, they're doing a lot of researching and making sure that the food looks good um, as the consumer gets their package. You know, and again, it's time to look at waste, um, energy waste, and downsizing the menu. We heard from quite a few panelists. They talk about just shrinking that menu or looking at it. If you're bringing back your salad bars, do you need 60 items? Probably not, you'll shrink it down to 40. So if you can go over to the chat and just tell us how you're using, if you're using packaging and what you're using, is it styrofoam, is it paper, is it reusable, is it recyclable? Um, we'd just be curious to find out. And also you could see here that they're using the, the compostable packaging, a lot of paper. Uh, reusable containers are in high demand for 2021. Um, we're hearing that that has really been, the prices have went up and it's been a, a challenge to get the, some of these pieces in. But there was an interesting article that talked about every piece of plastic that's ever been um, ever been made is still exist. Think about it, globally, we produce 300 million tons of plastic waste every year. 78%, which is not reclaimed or recycled. That's a lot of plastic. Um, there's a fast food chain right now in Europe. They are testing a reusable cup. And the new and new, there's a 94% um, paper wine bottles that are being used out of recycled paper boards. And there's a company called Zero Grocery that offers grocery delivery service with no plastics. The other thing that you'll see in 2022 will be a lot more on composting. And it could even be for home composting. This is um, also embracing the root to stem philosophy. Um, the approach is simple. Use every edible part of the produce that you cook. So you could try crisping chips from potato peels. You can use asparagus stems and again, blanch or broil or grill those for salads and soups. Broccoli stalks can be used for close for slaws and stir fries, carrot tops and um, salads and radishes can be used as a pesto. So some of the equipment that's gonna be really important for now for 2021 and 2022 will be recycle centers. Um, again, with all these uh, disposables and IW products that's being used, you know, the, stay in touch with what's important for the, this generation. They are speaking to it right now. They're very savvy and passionate about sustainable practices more than ever before. We have involving venues. Um, so reinvent 
reinventing how and where food is prepared, served, and consumed. Forget the traditional footprint. Grocery stores look more like cafes. Cafes look more like kiosks. Restaurants are implementing ghost kitchens and switching takeout for tables. Venues are reorganizing and in need to broaden their offerings and experience to have the minimal square footage and contact, but keeping the maximum consumer experience. Some of the micro trends are C store menus. Um, you're seeing that happen a lot with the, the C stores, ghost kitchens, restaurant pods, mobile kitchens, food trucks, AI, analytics, and robotics. And here's a great example too. We're going with frictionless, touchless, practical, finding your differentiator and easy to pick up options. You will see the shrinking dining rooms in 2021 and 2022 in the new designs and remodels of, of restaurants. Um, to go is here to stay. Restaurants are the in the future are unique in their delivery systems and their options. So one example would be one location of a restaurant now may have a third party pickup delivery, um, pick up for third party delivery, and then they have a pickup area for that that may take part of the dining room. You have double drive through lanes now. One might be for pickup, might be for ordering. You have an eat in your car area in the parking lot, also curbside pickup. So you'll see that one location can have all these different options. Hands-free and touchless are very important. You can see right here that there's a condiment station that is hands-free. Again, you can have a two things in your hand it might be a hot dog and a drink and you can use the foot pedal to get your condiment the micro markets are on steroids they're in all the market segments from bni healthcare to education they're planning on looking at more accessible uh, pickup options contactless 24 7 touchless again covid moved this on steroids um, one example is in healthcare. They did not have many uh, micro markets in the beginning before COVID. And now with COVID, they definitely have them. Um, they're starting to phase them out. But then when they did a survey, the, the staff said, no, please keep the micro markets. It really helps when you get a, off a 12 hour shift to have those markets there. And then the picture to the right just shows you a, a case that has been refrigerated. Again, when they take that salad bar, they were able to put it in a refrigerated case. Um, Pop-up mini marts. Um, this is a great example of underutilized space in lobbies. Um, as we've been talking to a lot of the end users, um, they said they wanna get the food to the, the customer. Um, we had one example of, we were just talking to a director and she said, we have two buildings, one side by side, and in the one building, we have a cafe, the other one we don't, the one building will not transfer over. So people won't leave their area. So they're gonna do a little pop-up again, just a little mini mart and bring that the food to that building. Um, so these can be used for grab and go, noodle bars, salad bars. And then the picture to the left shows you a great catering picture. And um, everything behind the sneeze guard is open, everything in front is closed, but I love the way they've merchandised this. They have the landscaping, they have the color and they have a lot of texture. So this really looks amazing. We'll look more onto labor crunch. Um, I think this is probably number one in the news right now. Um, so traditional operator challenges are efficiency of being challenged by the shifting workforce. The lack of available labor continues to change the face of food service industry. Operation, uh, um, operations are beginning to supplement their existing workforce more in advanced equipment automation um, into robotics. Um, they're leveraging through design. With minimum wages hikes expected, operators will be forced to find new and innovative ways to maximize their output. Again, we've got the shrinking workforce engagement and retention, accommodating schedules, uh, minimum wage conversations. Lean principles, employ central commissaries and protect your workers. Central commissaries have really taken on a vital role in food service here. 
Um, we just had a conversation with some directors and they said they had the central commissary and that saved them. Um, and then the same segment, we were talking to other directors and they did not have the commissary and they said they were struggling. So the commissary was able to make the micro microwave meals, grab and go, the bulk meals, and also meal kits for the industry. Um, so I think you'll see more of the commissaries in 2022. Um, also, too, have barriers that are installed for the back of the house and the front of the house. You can see in the picture right there, they've got the plexi all the way around um, their display. So, again, they're, the, the employees want the safety. So, engage the community to volunteer, uh, training, cross-cultural, generational, task training, adopt to the robotics. Um, again, the BNI market was talking about they're going to redesign the menu and then they're going to look at the labor. So again, they're going to create the menu first and then the labor. And here's a robot that can make up to 300 different or 300 pizzas per hour. And with labor crunch, again, the industry segments, um, you know, they're taking a look at redesigning some of their um, shrinking menus but they're also looking at ways to work smarter and not harder. You know, operators are cross-training to help with the labor crunch, teaching uh, workers to do multiple jobs and not just one role. And then also looking at the flow of the kitchen in the back of the house and how many steps you're taking, maybe reorganizing that. And with the labor crunch, here's a great example of equipment. To the uh, right, you have a piece of equipment that's great to use before the dishes go back to the dish room so that you're not sorting them a couple different times. People should be able to put the dishes in the racks and the tubs, and it's already pre-sorted before it goes back. And then to the left, we have uh, a product here, which is being used, and this is in a school. So they're delivering meals to the classroom. And when she was making 13 trips, now she can make three trips because these carts all link together. And so that saved a lot on labor at that location. So now we're going to turn this over to Robert Watson. Um, he's going to talk about the Linenus. Thank you, Nancy. Um, You're welcome. So we're going to start out uh, kind of looking at uh, uh, lineless applications. How did it come about? <clears throat> it's nothing new. Um, back uh, with part of my uh, uh, past, uh, I used to sell, obviously, and I was involved in the furniture industry as well uh, with equipment. <clears throat> Going back to about the 2008 recession, lineless really started to take on shape uh, within hotels, convention centers, clubs, uh, et cetera, looking to reduce costs. <clears throat> as they looked at more of that, you started to have some more design concepts uh, for uh, corporate lodging, et cetera, that where you tried to take on more of a home or office look within those types of spaces. <clears throat> In this case, think farm to table or think, you know, your desk at your office. And so with this, uh, you know, we had to get into uh, actually showing where high-end furniture, even with its elevated cost at that particular time, uh, was a justified expense. <clears throat> so we, uh, in the group that I was uh, involved in, uh, we created sort of a formula called linens, labor, and laundry. <clears throat> and we were able to help uh, pull out a calculation between buying higher-end furniture that had no linen versus lower end furniture that was used with linen. So the design was to reduce operational costs. You wanted to make meeting and dining spaces, once again, look more like office or home. At home, dining or kitchen area tables rarely had fancy linen except for special occasions. For conference tables, a plain top was more of a reminder of their desk at home or at their office. Many facilities used a laminate surface to emulate a wood look and also have it nice and cleanable. <clears throat> and linens, you would save money on current inventory and no new purchases. So we actually 
pull together the linens, the labor, and the laundry, you would not have to purchase any new linens. You would have to have limited uh, um, hands-on uh, with the current linen, even in your inventory. You would save on the labor to actually set the table up, tear the table down, organize the laundry, and then take it back to the back of, of, uh, of the property, either for an in-house laundry or uh, a contracted laundry service. And with the laundry, <clears throat> not only did you save on the cost, but you were also having some sustainability factors in that by saving on the water usage and the actual chemicals uh, and uh, cleaning agents used to uh, clean the uh, uh, linen. So you had a very nice positive uh, environmental impact with the fewer chemicals uh, and less water used in the cleaning process. So with that, we wanted to introduce some of our new linenless solutions <clears throat> that can be used senior care, hotels, convention centers, sports arenas, uh, in, in certain uh, club areas, et cetera. <clears throat> and it's going to be from our Geneva brand category, uh, and it's called the Traveler Series. <clears throat> We've put together multiple designs that allow for things like uh, grab and go tables, uh, um, cold serving uh, with eutectic pans, uh, all can have uh, uh, sneeze guards covering those particular things. We have the ability to do induction units <clears throat> and create them in different angles. In addition to these types of serving things, it, and what we're being told by some of the consultant community is that, you know, the buffet style will come back eventually. Uh, there'll be modifications to it along the way, but you will have um, <clears throat> more open uh, situations where guests are able to uh, uh, serve themselves. And in some cases, uh, modification will allow for a server, but they'll still have choice um, and quasi all you can eat. <clears throat> to the left here, you'll see in this picture is one of our linenless solutions. And it's, we're uh, introducing a new set of nesting tables. <clears throat> we'll have two sets of nesting tables. One is going to have a set where you'll have them basically accordion out in the front. Uh, it'll be a, a, a three table setup uh, so that you can actually stagger the heights from front to back uh, using uh, different types of um, uh, tabletop uh, uh, displays. And then on our other model, you'll have two end tables uh, that will be able to be pulled out to the side. And once again, Depending on your small wares setup, uh, <clears throat> it'll give chefs the ability uh, to stagger the heights of their various presentations. In order to help with sanitation, you're going to be able to clean these very easily. Uh, you'll have either a stainless top, <clears throat> a very nice uh, high-end laminate top, or you're going to be able to use a, a solid surface uh, top as well. Here's just a, uh, one of the uh, examples of a configuration that can be put up uh, as a fill-in <clears throat> based on your uh, arrangement. We've actually been able to design uh, corner pieces that can set in that would allow for a really nice clean look of symmetry <clears throat> and allow uh, the uh, operator to put dishes, plants, uh, toppings, um, any type of other condiments uh, uh, along the uh, path that uh, guests might use to uh, uh, get all of their uh, food. Once again, here's another one where you have the uh, linenless uh, nesting tables that come out in front uh, <clears throat> that do an, uh, a, a, a different height from front to back uh, and allow for some different creativity in uh, a chef's presentation, whether it be, you know, the regular chef or the pastry chef. And then here's an uh, opportunity uh, to able to show off uh, how you can actually go from a, a chef with a cooking apparatus and a, a cold table in front of it, where they could actually transfer what has been uh, cooked to their right, mm -hmm. and then go over to a presentation table uh, and. Um, put anything on that and serve that also to the guest. Once again, utilizing linenless 
and <clears throat> very easy cleanability and helping save some money and uh, being somewhat sustainable uh, and not using uh, a lot of water and uh, uh, cleaning chemicals. And that is uh, our Linenless presentation in a nutshell. And uh, we're now open and available for a question and answer if uh, anyone would like to enter those questions into the chat box. Also joining us is our VP of Product Development, John Wojcik. Uh, so we'd, we'd be happy to answer any kind of questions that uh, you all might have. All right, thank you very much to Robert and Nancy for going through those those trends and what's kind of going on out there uh, with those three trends and then of course the Linenless solutions. Thank you very much. I do have a couple of questions here um, and I'm actually gonna direct the first couple of them at, at John. Um, like Robert said, our VP of product development on the line here with us to talk traveler series. So John, the first question that we have is about um, how to clean these linenless tables. How would you suggest we go, we be cleaning these? Nope, John, you might be on mute. John, you're on mute. Okay, the, um, again, we, we kind of spoke to engineers about this. We sort of prepped for this presentation actually, because we were guessing the questions that may be asked and that was one of them. Uh, these products are used laminates, they use uh, stainless. Uh, the actual legs are gonna be a powder coated uh, carbon steel. So the best way to wash these is just gonna be warm soapy water. Um, <clears throat> you know, you don't you wanna use abrasives, especially if you're using stainless. Uh, abrasives, if you go against the grain, create this scratchy look to it. Uh, the powder coat is actually a very strong commercial material. Uh, th these were built to be commercial. I mean, you can you can go to a uh, furniture store and, and find a product that from a, a, a visual standpoint gets it done. Uh, but these were meant to be uh, commercial, something with a 10 year life. So I would go with, uh, you know, some uh, just warm soapy water uh, and, uh, and and just go that way. And then and always if you're going to have some abrasion or you're going to use some sort of a sponge, just go with the grain of it. Uh, but it's it's heavy duty stuff and it'll stand up to commercial applications. But you don't, you don't want to get like an Ecolab caustic uh, material on there because it will scratch it, uh, you know, and, and it'll lose that kind of aesthetic. The fact that it's linenless is that you want to you want to keep that look as uh, you know kind of as pristine as possible. Awesome, very good, thank you. The next question too, John, I'm gonna send your way because it's about the the Traveler Series tables. Is how would you order kind of a lineup? If you could kind of talk about how the the different sizes work together and connect and just kind of how somebody would potentially go about designing a lineup of these or kind of ordering these? Uh, yep, so so what you'll have is is we have um, spec sheets that have the standard sizes. Um, it really falls in line with, um, with Lakeside's um, process of uh, custom modification, meaning you can buy the standard product. Um, I think we've got like nine standard laminate colors, uh, but you can deviate. So for instance, if you want to match a decor, uh, you could you could get those. Uh, we'll use any type of laminate, uh, any kind of manufacturer, etc. Um, the way that you actually would design this lineup is you have the standard pieces. <clears throat> excuse me, but I, I think what you look at is if you look at um, Robert's presentation, <clears throat> you almost design it like you would a um, a lineup, uh, meaning you look at the functionality, what you're trying to do, and then what you'll do is you take a plan view, meaning you know a top down view, and say how do you want to lay this out. Um, the good example that Robert showed is, is this was sort of created as a uh, chef station, right? Uh, he, to his left, he had a, a little uh, one by one, um, uh, it's actually a eutectic um, pan which holds things cold. Um, that's sort of that's sort of his, uh, probably incorrect, with like a mise en place, something that he's gonna take his ingredients, finish it probably with an induction range, and then to the right, he was gonna store that. So the point is, is you look at the functionality, what you wanted to do, you can plan a top-down view on that. And if you can use standard items, we can execute it that way. Uh, if we would need to have something custom, we do that. But the starting point is the functionality and then what you kind of laying down that top-down view. Um, and, and what you can do is you can uh, work with your rep or work with our factory. Robert's an expert and, and we've got other folks, uh, including myself, that can help kind of lay out that functionality. And then from that, you can design the whole lineup. Um, I'm trying to think what the, 
Yeah, we've got, oh, one question, one thing that Robert was talking about real quick while we talk about that is the food guards, if you look at that, all you have to do is reverse the table once things go from full serve to self serve. Okay, and what we're seeing is the prior part of that presentation was talking about labor being such an issue. Um, self serves coming back, whether it's a self serve prepackaged or something, because no one has the labor to have a person sitting in every four foot station. So these tables are really pretty cool because in the short term, you know, you might have a full serve type application, but in the long term, you'd simply rotate that table and then someone could go into a, a self serve. So it's it's got legs to it. It's not uh, a COVID solution. It's a long -term solution. So anyways, but that's how you do it. You would plan the functionality, you would lay it out almost like a serving line. And then we would look at the standard items that would fulfill it. And if it required a custom item, we would fill it in. All right, very good. Thanks again. Um, the next question, and it's the, the last one I have so far. So if there's anything else out there, uh, if anybody else has questions, please drop those in the chat. Um, otherwise, this is our last one. I'm gonna send to you, Nancy. Um, and um, if you could talk about, this is kind of your opinion, you could give your opinion on um, when um, the sustainability practices are going to be back in full swing um, post-COVID, do you think, and when those, um, the single use that we've seen kind of proliferated during, um, you know, the pandemic, when you think that those are going to go away? You know, it was, it's interesting because I've heard from quite a few of the, you know, webinars, panels, and podcasts, and that is the one thing that they talked about, you know, the BNI, especially in the tech world out, you know, in California was what they were doing a really great job with sustainability before COVID, and then everything had to be put on pause. Um, they said the minute that they could start bringing it back, they've already put groups together. They will. Um, because they want to get away from this individually wrapped single use, you know, they want to get away from the single use and get back to where they were before. So again, um, and as long as people are safe, that's the most important thing and they can get food to the consumers. But they're predicting by this fall, they're going to start phasing that all and going back to what they were doing before COVID. So I think you'll see a lot of things happening this fall and definitely in 2022, they've got these focus groups put together and they're going to move it forward. All right, awesome. Um, and then I do have uh, I do have one more question, and John, I think that this is another good one for you to to respond to, which is, um, do we currently have, or are we going to offer some sort of a laminate with antimicrobial property? Um, any type of laminate, excuse me, any type of laminate uh, we can apply. So uh, again, there's a number of laminates out there, but if you wanted to go an antimicrobial, all we would do is specify the color of the manufacturer and we would apply it. Uh, it would so, be so a modified opportunity, would you, John? Yes, yeah. Okay. Our, our, uh, the standard laminates that we have, I mean, you know, nine colors is not gonna solve the world's problems for color and for decor. Uh, they're they're maybe popular uh, middle of the road type colors. Um, for these, again, the pictures that Robert showed, you know, they're obviously uh, trying to match the decor, uh, really sort of have a, a kind of a high end approach to that look. So whatever the laminate is, whether it be um, an antimicrobial, um, we could apply uh, metallics even, whatever the laminate is, we can apply that. Um, one, one quick out there real quickly while we talk about that. Uh, this equipment can be used. Uh, this equipment was not meant to be stored outdoors. Um, it can be used, I mean, if it gets rained on, it's not gonna hurt it, but it's not meant to be that. Uh, so it's just important as you look at this, I mean, you get requests for things like uh, all of those all those uh, venue pictures that we showed are perfect applications. If it's gonna sit underneath an overhang and an outside rack, that's okay. Um, but it still is a, a furniture type of, it's a heavy duty commercial furniture type, but if you needed something with an outdoor application, please contact us as well, because we may be able to, uh, uh, you know, custom customize a version for you that would would help. So uh, I, I I just I don't know if this you know if the audience are seeing is how much we do in terms of the percentage of our business at Lakeside are, are these sort of tweaks. If you have some sort of a uh, a problem, uh, we will find a way to solve it, and we it, it's part of our business model to to create those type of solutions. So it, it's kind of an open ended answer, but in terms of my antimicrobials, we can absolutely do it. Specify what the manufacturer is, or we can find that and the color, and, and we can quote that as part of uh, a project. 
All right, very good. Well, those are all the questions that came in, but uh, just a reminder that this uh, this presentation will be available on our website. So there's a recording of this as well as the PDF of all of these slides here today. Um, and if you do have any other questions, please feel free to reach out either through your rep um, or directly to us through our customer service team. And um, thank you again so much to our panelists and thank you to everybody uh, that joined us. And we hope that you found it informative and we hope to catch you at a future webinar. Thanks again and have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Bye. Take care.